Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Terrence. Uh, right. Breaks. Somebody's in a hurry. Jeff. Mm-hmm. Mahogany. Mm-hmm. No banter. Start the show. Okay. <laughs> Banners for fools. We're skipping it. That sounds like banter to me. Just get get on with it. <laughs> what? Well, we've been doing banter. Tables yeah, no, no, no. Jeff, if we're yeah, not was, recording. It was very, it was very not, boring personal banter. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. we're not recording, it's not banter, Jeff. It's called friendship and trying to catch up on each other's lives. And I get that you don't want to be a part of that, but we haven't seen each other or we haven't spoken to each other in like three weeks. That's almost a month. That's some, that's the longest some of us have gone yeah. without talking to each other. How would you know that I almost died driving a food truck if we didn't take that 30 minutes to just catch up with each other? Yeah. <laughs> I just realized none of us asked Jeff how his month has been. So that's why he's mad. I, I said, how's everybody been? And Jeff neglected to communicate. Jeff, how was your how was your month? This is banter. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Has anybody watched or played near Automata? No, and I don't care. Moving on. No ad. We're doing a different format, so I'm changing the. I'm I'm just skipping the format because the format we were doing was not conducive to the format that we had. What, what, what? You dig? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> are you not doing a, are you making up a, a big long excuse for why there's no commercial or? No, I'm just <laughs> saying that the, the, any commercial I would do have no connection to anything going on with what we're doing right now. So oh, because we're in grave. Yes. But we're inside a video game. You could have come up with a fake video game. I'm not doing a Raid Shadow Legends ad. In the oh, what about a fake, it? We a fake could... Raid Shadow Legends ad. There's that uh, Savage Worlds game that I've always wanted to play just called Chickens in the Mist. Uh, could have <laughs> done that's an a ad real for... thing. That's a real thing. We could have done an ad. Well, so is Grave. Ch Chizzards in the uh, Mist. Chizzards in the Mist storm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, uh, you guys, you guys have to submit things. Feel free to do it. Uh, anyway. Well, I didn't know oh, that yeah. you needed a commercial. I could have yeah. done something. I've got a commercial about uh, Country Boy's Wok Pan Gravy. Um, <laughs> I have to pull it up here. Uh, hold on, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead and banter a little bit while I look for this commercial that I wrote down. Oh, oh that's all right, because I was thinking about the same thing earlier um, this week. I was going, wouldn't it be cool to have a video game ad at the very beginning of the um, session? Like some kind of like Shadow Grave. But, you know, <laughs> play Shadow Grave, a, a virtual, you know, Grave MMO. Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so we're playing, we're in real life, we're playing Grave. Yes. Uh, to replicate the video game that we're playing in Starfinder. Yes. What was the game called in Starfinder? It's not a game, it's a simulation. You guys are, you guys are on a, you guys are on a very simple simulation. There's, I, I went with a simple construct. system. Yeah, I went with a simpler system to simulate the sort of low res quality of the the single um, eight bit sim simulation uh, unit that you guys are delving mm -hmm. into. This is a side scroller through our companion's brain. Yeah, you're you're platforming your way th through this. <laughs> I was playing, and Jeff could get could get behind this banter. Maybe I've been playing Cyberpunk a lot lately. Again. Sure. And in, in Cyberpunk, I'm playing the game Cyberpunk, and in that game, I'm playing an arcade game um, called Roach Jump, which is where you play as the Witcher's horse uh, through a side scroller where you have to jump over fences and monsters and apples. So I'm playing a video game that's playing a video game that's about a separate video game altogether. <laughs> Doing meta. the inception of video games. Mm -hmm. It's very, very meta. It was very cool for about three minutes. And then I was like, I can actually go play a real modern day video game. I can stop playing this 8-bit horse jumping game. Yeah, I played a lot of Fallout 4, but I have never once played the little arcade games on the pit. I, I normally try them once or twice uh, just That's to see what they look like. You should plug one in. <laughs> there was a video game that um, 
within the video game, you could watch an entire movie. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's it's uh, the... MST key, MST3K over by the Red Letter Media guys. Yeah, what is it called? Something Life? Demon Wind? Oh, uh, no, no, he's no, no, no. The... It's not Second Life, it's um... High on Life. High on Life, yeah. Uh, uh, actually... I was referring to the movie that they're watching. Yeah, Demon, Demon Wind, oh. one of my favorite terrible movies. The people riffing it are the the is J Mike and um Rich Rich, Rich from a from fucking from fucking Red Letter Media. So I'm interested in seeing it. I just don't want to play high on life that much. Yeah. <laughs> you only need to play it long enough to get to the theater in the game to watch them watch the movie and make fun of it. I bet I could find it or like ripped somewhere on yeah, YouTube. You can find it <laughs> it's, on it's, YouTube. On, it's on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I found out about it. <laughs> Well, I know what I'm doing after we're done with this. All right. So. <clears throat> we're going in. Ad free. Raiders of the Lark. 2.0. Outside the walls of the City of Death, your small band of adventurers, quote unquote, arrive. The walls of the city are massive, towering. It's difficult to guess the height because everything is difficult here. Everything is foreshortened or very warped in some way. The gates of the city are closed and there are two massive um, armored guards on either side of the very big gates. There is a small line of people waiting at at the gate, though, mostly like peddlers and merchants. People with sacks on their backs. They look like some of them look like refugees. That they, they're all to a man and woman, extremely elderly. They don't seem to be uh, doing anything proactive, though. They're all just sitting in their carts, or some of them have a cook fire going just off the road. Proceed inward. Did we rest last time? Did you? Yeah, I feel like we did because I've got uh, no zero deaths, twelve revival. No, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I got all my stamina back. That's that's the question. Okay. All right. Like a <laughs> fool, I wrote down my stamina and pen marks, so uh, <laughs> I can't just erase those when we're done. <laughs> I'm gonna start a whole new line. All right, so Grimjax, you head down. And um, no one seems to be saying a word. No one raises a hand in greeting. No one does anything but what they're doing. A man casually picks a fly off his brow and eats it. Quality. Walk through the gates as if nothing's, you know, like I'm supposed to be there. All right. As you approach the gates, however, the two massive guards lower two massive halberds across each other in front of you. A deep, echoing boom comes from their, both their uh, their armors. Halt. None shall pass. Hmm. I think that's the whole point of a gate, is to let people pass. The city is currently in turmoil. We have been ordered... Do not let anyone pass until we receive orders. Fair mm. enough. We were here to bring you orders to let us through. <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead and uh, let's see. Do a charisma check for me to try and bluff this fella. I will. Plus four charisma. <laughs> Booyakasha! 22. <laughs> 22. Okay. <laughs> All right. You um, you bark out the order uh, as if as if you were born to the role. You, you surprise even yourself with how militarily precise you sound. Uh, the two massive armored figures there. You hear the squeak of metal on metal as their heads turn and look at each other. They tentatively begin drawing their halberds back. 
and you see the old people in line. They begin to excitedly gather their things. Excitedly, but slowly. They're all old. Mm. <laughs> the uh, the guards slowly take their take few steps back. And then you see one of them reach behind him and like knock on the the door but the door itself in a in a in a strange pattern. Boom 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 boom. Um you guys hear the sound of massive metal chains being uh cranked from the other side. And it's almost as if you can hear an airlock open as the doors uh, crack apart. Uh, a gust of gritty wind sucks into the city as they as they slowly move inward. And um, the guard says, "Proceed." Proceed in. Uh, but immediately, immediately behind you, as you guys walk through, the uh, the, the first old, the first cart with an old man begins to move forward, and you guys see a massive halberd, basically just pinwheel down as quick as lightning, slicing the old man and his cart in half, as the doors close behind you. That seems a tad unnecessary. Ah, uh, it's a video game. Hairs wasn't a real old man and even if it was a real old man <laughs> who cares who cares <laughs> <laughs> hmm I wonder if these are his memories if those are memories that are being kept out if, um, if everything here is a metaphor for something else I don't know says um, your new companion Alagor as he uh looks around the city and says, what could this possibly mean? And you just see a, just a, a towering cityscape of massive statues of uh, basically like fit, powerful, nude gothic figures like holding up portions of buildings. Like it's all um, very, very tall, very, very imposing and very uh, concerning as far as uh, the the, con the the context and content of what these statues are doing to each other while supporting the um, the city around it. So flexible for statues. <laughs> it's just like gay 40k. <laughs> uh, it's a mixture of uh, violence and sex uh, that you have not ever even fathomed that could be within a person's brain. You don't know my backstory. <laughs> we do, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, you murdered your broodmate. Yeah, well, well, that's traditional. Yes, yeah. 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 It just lets me know that sex and violence go hand in hand in this culture. Nothing traditional is going on here. Uh, <laughs> there is uh, a street, and it seems to be occupied with people that are wearing robes, thick robes of all different colors, um, that seem to be sort of uh, attached to them by screws and uh, chains. It looks like somebody, everyone here was draped with a robe and then had it sort of welded on with metal plates. Mm. At the shoulders, necks, uh, forearms. It's like walking through a Cenobite gathering. <laughs> oh, that Rick and Morty episode with the Cenobites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that gives me pleasure, which gives me pain, which gives me pleasure. <laughs> Nobody here seems to be having much pleasure, though. Um, was Cenobite accurate? No, not really. Everyone here looks miserable. Whenever mm. you, whenever they do turn around, you can see their haggard, blood-drained faces. But the faces all have a sort of a samey quality to them. Difficult to, like, figure out what makes it samey. It's just... 
recursive. Like some of them have beards, some of them have long hair, some of them have short hair, some of them have like scars, but all of them have a sort of a hair face. Huh? Like a pear face. <laughs> have a close relative look about them. <laughs> uh, oh. uh-huh. they are. Indeed. A man in a blue robe this. approaches you, holding a tin cup. <laughs> Do you have anything for the poor? The indigent? The suffering? Yeah, disdain. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's some gut level honesty right there. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the the man in the blue robe backs away, um, uh, contrite. He he probably gets this reaction a lot whenever mm-hmm. he encounters someone. Ballsy to keep doing it, then. <laughs> oh yeah, well you know, what else is there to do? You don't see anything that looks like a business or any kind of commerce going on here. It's just. A bunch of people wandering around in robes that they cannot take off. Well, uh, we are unfortunately somewhat short on time. So, Amagor, if you would uh, please lead the way. To it's been a long this... time since I've been in the city, but I think I remember the way. He begins to move forward ahead of your group and um, walking down the streets people approach him um tentatively and but before they can even get there he holds out a hand ah no no <laughs> and they back away for the most part you go you move your way through the, between the uh, the massive legs of some squatting figure with something going on overhead in the statue region <laughs> and into an open plaza. The plaza, once you step into it, is drastically different than the the parts of the city that you went through. Everything here is colorful, cheery. Um, Everyone is dressed very nicely. And everyone here, to a man, is some kind of animal. Hmm. And not just any kind of animal, just like a a cartoon parody of an animal, a child's drawing of an animal, or rather a drawing geared toward children of an animal. Everything here has bright, big, soulful eyes and smiles on their faces. You see uh, a a creature that looks sort of like a, sort of like a a raccoon with three tails uh, selling ice cream from a cart. So out of 40K and into Disney. (laughs) <laughs> no, we don't say Disney. Looney Tunes. Merry Melodies. No. no. Closer. Let's go with Care Bears. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> the era of strawberry shortcake. Yes, this is a very strawberry shortcake kind of wor- of area. Nothing here is perverse. Nothing here is violent. Everything here looks innocent. Which makes it even creepier. Yeah. <laughs> it's especially uh, creepy when you look down at your armors, which have all taken on a similar appearance to the environments around you. While you're still wearing roughly the same things you wear, it's more stylized, curly, uh, brightly colored. <laughs> you with your dark gothic armor, um, Grimjax, you see there's a motif of uh, hearts. Hmm. And <laughs> as long as they're all black, we're good. They are many shades of black. <laughs> hmm. As uh, as your guide, Allegor looks around from place to place. Is like, ooh, this is this is new. I don't I don't recognize any of this. <sighs> he um. He walks up to one of the uh, the, the, the vendors uh, here in the plaza. This one seems to be a, sort of a four-eared bunny rabbit. <laughs> and he, uh, he leans down. We're looking for the alchemist's tower. Can you direct us, please? The creature begins to chitter and chatter in animal language. <laughs> and Alagor uh, stands up for a moment and says, I don't know what he's saying. 
I'd like to activate my HUD menu and see if I can put mm. subtitles on and mm. if it will translate them for me. <laughs> uh, I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> the subtitles read animal noises. <laughs> uh the subtitles, whenever the creature begins to cheep and, and chitter again, says uh, Adorabun, colon. The Alchemist Tower is down is down that way, but you don't want to go there. It's dangerous. Yeah, we want to go that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather have one of these delicious, delicious cookies? No. <laughs> Pick up some sand and throw it in its face. <laughs> <laughs> How rude! Oh, he begins. To, he begins to weep openly, and you see some of the other uh, the other animal merchants around begin to um, to to look to frown and and chide you vocally. The the your your subtitles can't get up. You're, you're a bad person. Naughty, naughty. Oh my boner! <laughs> Proceed onward. <laughs> you, the last, the last subtitle you see before you walk away it says, "We're calling Officer Bear on you." Oh, oh! <laughs> we should probably hurry, Zen, so we don't have to murder a cartoon character. Um, you hear a whistle, like a little police whistle, old timey, old timey like. And you see an adorable teddy bear with a with a with a tall Bobby's hat uh, begin uh, trundling through the crowd. He's not carrying um, a, a weapon so much as this looks like a giant lollipop. Your your translation below as he begins to adorably growl at you. Because here, here, what are you doing? Why did you attack Mister Adorabon? Simple misunderstanding. I thought they wanted sand in their face. <laughs> the uh, the, just move along. the crying Adorabon uh, begins to mule pitifully and points at, he's a bad lizard, a bad, bad lizard. And, yeah. and Officer Bear says, well, we know what we have to do with bad lizards. And um, you guys see an explosion of light and rainbows and hearts and stars. And in a moment, uh, Officer Bear has been replaced with the most monstrous thing you've ever seen. Oh, oh shit. Well, I was still, trying to move on. It's still wearing a little blue bobby hat, and its lollipop is still there, but much bigger and much more spiky. But the, the thing holding it is just a, a horror show of ripped and exposed flesh and fur. So so difficult to describe. I won't. In the meantime, we should do initiative. Roll! <laughs> it's cocaine bear, bit by a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so what are we rolling? Be 20 under. The lower the better, right? No. <laughs> Not for initiative, I hope. I thought it was uh you gotta be fifteen. Yes, you gotta be. Oh, that's right. To go first, and if yeah, before the bill, the bad guy, or is it fifteen and up, or beat fifteen? I think yeah, it's meat. Yeah, meter beat. Mm. Yeah. Wisdom save. So you roll your wisdom. Oh, okay, mm. cool. So yeah, definitely, um, in before the monster. Yeah, the I monster did a natural. Does natural twenty on an initiative do anything? No. Nah. Well, that's a shame because I too got a natural twenty on my mm. initiative share. Yeah. You're just whizzing them down your leg, then. <laughs> yeah, the, I rolled an eighteen to lie to a guard at a twenty for initiative. It is definitely all downhill from here. <laughs> well, maybe this is just your night to shine. Yeah, I, I did that already. I threw sand in a cartoon character's face. That's the highlight of uh, my character tonight, the Crimson King. Who I'm playing like a cartoon villain for this. Uh, Oh my gosh. I do not remember what my character's name was, but I just remembered what it looked like. Very, uh. Uh. The spooky. 
the spooky comic book version of Groot. Yeah, creepy Groot. Yeah. I think you just went with Weep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it was. It was Weep. I remember. <laughs> I am Weep. I am Weep. Yes. Thank you. My pleasure. Hmm. Um. Ooh, my brooch. Yeah, the way the way Terrence described this happy, happy, lovely place right after that horrifying sex and violence display, I kind of expected <laughs> any antagonistic action towards these cartoon characters would end up in. Um, an explosion of teeth and claws. And congratulations, you got it. Uh, what was your what was your role? First or I go, second? I go set first. First. All right. Uh, who was second? Sorry, we're talking over each other. I'm also before. All right. Uh, Jeff, what'd you get? I rolled an eleven. Okay. So second. And guys. Before. Okay. All right. So out of the three of you that go before <laughs> Officer Bear, which who would like to go do a thing? Uh I'll go ahead and walk up to it, saunter up and smack it with my battle axe. Alright. Mm, what am I adding to that? My strength? So it's a 20, so that's enough. Yes. yes, that's enough. Uh, I think it's a d10 for my damage. Do, 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 do. Or five damage. No damage. All right. You lay into the beast. First blood and all. Um, Take that, you bear weirdo. <laughs> Geister, I'm sorry. Um, Grim Jack, or no, Geister Val. My bad. Go ahead, boss. Okay. Um, Geist will ninja run up and throw some poison at its face. Okay. So you got to give me a um, a save. I believe you have to roll to, against its mic. Do I thought yeah. that's what the save was for? I, I'm trying to read now where what how to use poison, and it, <laughs> it's really not clear in this. Yeah, well, there's a lot of that. <laughs> Let's really pare down. Um, I guess Jesus, I'll, I'll, where did you find poison? It's in the um alchemy and spellcasting. It's also in the thief um, toolkit. Ah. All it says is save versus d6 ongoing damage. I see, I see spellcasting but I don't see alchemy. All right, uh, well, under items. But all right. Uh, 16, uh, 18 plus 4, 22. Okay. All right. Um, he, you, uh, you throw the poison at the the creature, and he takes a big sniffle of it, and uh, immediately begins to uh, retch, taking five damage. Okay. Um. <sighs> Let's see, Val. Yeah. Uh, fireball. Okay. Uh, there it is. Roll to four, giving me an eight. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's just take that all the two yeah. down. Then I move further away from the combat. Oh uh, yeah, I'm afraid that's a miss. Uh, you, uh, your fireball goes wild and uh, zooms across the courtyard. It explodes into a, um, a cart filled with uh, candy canes. The whole place smells like burning mint. And as you retreat, meanwhile, Officer Bear uh, basically takes a big uh, 
like a, a, a grip on his massive spiked lollipop and swings it at the at the, at the near opponents, which is you two. Since uh, you guys had to come up and do your things. Okay. All right. So. Rolled a tw- uh, 20, dirty 20. All right. Uh, what'd you get? We. Uh, I'm supposed to be rolling a what now? Uh, defense. Um, no, we age armor. Armor, armor, armor. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a nine. No. Nine. Um, shockingly, that uh, that that meets what I rolled. So <laughs> you were able to dodge it. <laughs> I rolled so low on both those. Uh, <laughs> um, the the massive lollipop. Uh, I guess. Not flail, uh, morning star at this point. Uh, it takes a wide arc, swinging at both of you at the same time. However, you both leap out of the way. Your go, Mr. Grimjax. Uh, using my demon magistrate's gavel, try to lay the smack down on him. I rolled a 15, is plus my strength correct? That's a 19. All right. That's a hit. All right. And damage would just be the, the straight up dice roll, correct? It's not plus strength. Yeah, it's just the dice roll. Uh, five points damage, and he's knocked down. All right. Five points of damage, knocked down. Uh, you bring your demon something gavel. Magistrate's gra- gavel. Yeah, your magistrate's crazy gavel. And uh, clown hammer him. Uh, across the noodle. Uh, the thing lets out a roar and falls back on its uh, large, bloody bear rump, uh, crushing a uh, nearby, um, looks like, looks to be like a gopher. <laughs> it lets out a pitiful moan. Your go. I guess you're going to keep the same order? Works for me, but I uh, remember there being something about having to yeah, redo initiative. The, uh, the, the way the game is, you're supposed to, like the rules are, you're it, supposed to re-roll every time. How do you guys want to play it that way today, since we're just since we're starting out today? Do the roll, roll every round? Yeah, I'll we'll roll it each time. It keeps it... Okay, uh, go ahead. Keeps it fresh. Then give me another roll. Let me know if you're going first Ooh. or second. First. Uh, this is a wisdom? Yep. Second. By one. Second. Second. All right. So uh, first it's all on me. On you, <laughs> Dalgorth. <laughs> it's, it's it's prone. It is prone. That doesn't really do much. I don't think. I mean, Other than yeah. waste its action to get up. Yeah, I'm gonna run up and stab it with my knife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And Knife attack. I rolled a four again for a five. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm afraid it bounces off the horrible hide the creature has. Whoops. Um, but it goes, and let's see. Do I have to save every round for the poison, or does it just happen after you it fail? Is, it is ongoing. It doesn't really say. It just says save or take D6 ongoing. So okay. I guess it goes until you save. Yeah, I would say keep saving. All right, let's see. Uh, he does not save this round, so let's do some damage. All right, takes three. And that was the wrong end of the brush marker. Um. He uh, writes himself again, and basically uh, picks up his uh, picks up his lolly, uh, and and draws it back for a big swing. But that is all he can do this round. So we're on to the second, the goes second crowd. Uh, Weepskeep, uh, Geist, or Grim? Who, who wants to go? 
20 to whack him with my battle axe. All right, well, you took the initiative and took the initiative. Good job. Um, let's see. <laughs> he does not save. So, do your damage. One. One Minimum. Damage. Minimum damage. One. Maximum effort. Yeah. <laughs> Got excited. I just clipped it. Uh, Grim or Geist? I'll go. I'll uh, draw two daggers, spend a stamina point, rolling a natural one. No. Rolling a natural <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> well, let's see. I forget. Does it give you a penalty for that? Oh, uh, it's... Um... Uh, oh. Lord. Sorry, uh, like everything I learned three weeks ago has utterly left my um, head. If <laughs> yes. the attacker rolls a natural 20, that doesn't matter. Or if the, blah, 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 the defender loses a point of quality. Blah, blah. If the attacker rolls a natural 1, or the defender rolls a natural 20, the attacker's weapon loses one point of quality. All right, so your weapons lose a point of quality. So does that mean I still get the attack off or no? No, no, no. No, you still miss. Uh, got it. <laughs> We're trying to sky uh, damage. Uh, you're, you're doing damage every round anyway, apparently. Je Jeff. I rolled a 10, so plus 4, 14. 10 plus 4, 14. That. Oh, come back, come back. That is uh, not enough, I'm afraid. All right. Reroll initiatives. Before. Um, before. Before. A after. All right. Before is go. I'm gonna stab it again. All right. Go ahead. Huzzah! Ha ha ha! Uh, that's a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. That um will do the deal. All right, D6 knife damage. Take a one. Uh. <laughs> but doesn't do double damage? A uh, dirty 20. I didn't roll that 20. Oh, 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 dirty 20. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I will also stab it. Oh, natural 18. All right. Four. That will hit. Six damage. Nice. Six damage. Plus six. <laughs> and weep. I wrote a 15 even to hit him. All right. Let's see if I can save that. I do save, unfortunately. You miss. Well, shit. Right. And I save versus the poison. So I guess that's concluded. That's, that's done. Um, And so now he takes his big swing. Since you're all in melee range, I guess that's all y'all. So, everybody save. Is he attacking once uh, to hit all of us or each of us individually? He's attacking. I'm rolling. I'm, I'm rolling for each of you, but it's all. I'm going to spend. A, I'm going to cast a spell as a reaction uh, before he attacks me. Okay. What does it do so I can know what to roll? <laughs> uh, you. I rolled a 16, which gives me another dirty 20. He rolls right. a D4 instead of a D20 when he attacks me. Okay. Nice. I just jinxed him. <laughs> okay, so then I'll roll the d4 instead. All right. So, yeah, everyone roll to defend. You are defending against an eight. Mm. I roll max on the d4. <laughs> Natural 20. A 17. Natural 20. 17. Yeah, I've defended. All right, you defended. How about you, Weep? I'm, uh, it's all the same number. No, it is not. Everybody, I'm everybody, everybody got their own role. Uh, Toker jinxed his role. Okay, so a seven. All right, so let's see. Uh, the natural twenty saves. Um, Valgor saves, and he loses a point of quality on his weapon. And he loses a point of quality on his weapon. I guess that's his. Yeah, his big lolly. Um, the other two of you, which is um, which is Weepskeep and and Grimjacks, 
You guys take the full brunt of the massive lollipop morning star. Which does 12 damage. Oh. Oof. I'm dead. Yeah, same. All right. The two of you are obliterated, leaving the other two around. Don't forget, you guys, uh, on your rounds, you can use your 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 spirit essence to augment your pals or whatever. You know, you can throw in your D10, right? You can throw in a D10 or just automatically give them your charisma bonus to one roll. All right. Uh, so you yeah. don't have to, to call it until after the roll has been made. Gotcha. All right, so yes, you guys explode in a, in, a, in, a, in a shower of gore. In the meantime, let's re-roll initiative, those of you who live. Gore and sparkles. An- another natural 20 on my initiative. All right, you're doing great. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. 15, so 15. four. Uh, all right, then you two, you see the consequences of your uh, of, of getting hit. Ooh. Go ahead. Yes. I'll spend another uh, stamina point to give myself advantage and attack. Oh, good. A six and a nine. Six and a nine. So a 15. Four, 15. Uh, 13. All right. Um, I miss or I fail. You nice. Fail defending. Go ahead. Okay. Two damage. Two damage? All right. Uh, I forget. Did we rule that you could do y'all's bonuses or whatever to damage rolls? Uh, once per round, a killed PC's player adds their charisma bonus or D10. They're called to any roll made by another player before or after the roll. Oh, okay. So any roll. So if... Uh, it- before I move on, do you guys have anything you want to do with his turn? One of y'all should add something to that damage. I want to add to his damage. Yeah, I'll add seven to the damage. All right. Oh um, yeah. You see, your 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 weapon is suddenly empowered with spiritual energy, and um, what you thought was going to be maybe a glancing blow turns into a significant blow. Um, you guys hear the thing roar uh, in pain and and. Um, and grief, it's grief. You can hear the grief in the in the creature's voice. I and never finished the pierogi. <laughs> I had a puzzle to finish. <laughs> <laughs> as 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 the creature uh, melts into uh, a huge mound of gory of gory uh, bear parts. It's funny, it's sort of funny and incredibly sad. Like, that, that would be your last words. It's funny. And it's incredibly sad that the last thing you're thinking about is a stupid puzzle. You didn't finish. <laughs> um, as as the creature dies, you can see your two destroyed companions re-coalescing in the spots they were killed. They just sort of fly back together again. You guys mark off one of your deaths. Forget where, how many we got. You Ten can plus die, three. yeah, plus your charisma mod. All right. If a kill PC's deaths do not exceed their charisma defense, so it'll be 10 plus your charisma modifier. Yeah, yeah. You could die a lot here. Mm. Well, I've um, done one of them. Each of you get 100 souls, or sorry, 200 souls. Ooh. And <laughs> um, <laughs> you see that the, uh, the, the crowd of assembled cutesy animals are shocked horrified and like running for more uh aid so your 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 guide says perhaps we should leave the, the plaza perhaps or read we stay here in power level <laughs> just start murdering cutesy animals <laughs> the um the way is uh, uh quickly um marked by an environmental change. Mm. Oh, um, do we want to do decay for the two that died? Um, sure, yeah, we'll do some decay. <laughs> roll for decay, that's fun. What do we roll? A d20. 
Jeff, what'd you get? Roll your d20. Uh, okay. I have no clue what that is, but sure, eight. Eight. Uh, you now have a putrid stench. Decay 17. Is what, 17, you are riddled with maggots. <laughs> Just riddled with them. <laughs> These are the things that happen when you die and come back. <laughs> I should have had, I should have made a custom table for that area. I wanted something more um maybe it's on a, theme. But. Maybe it's a typo. She comes back and she has riddles that involve maggots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> riddling maggots <laughs> sit on your shoulders. They're, they're very annoying. Uh, I have no eyes, but I see. I walk, but I cannot run. And, and Jeff, your putrid stench is just like walking past a Bed Bath and Beyond in the mall. Ugh. Oh, that sickly sweet smell. Yeah. The worst. Yeah. Just <laughs> like a, scented candles mingling together. Like an old lady who's given up on showering and just douses in perfume, and it's like that'll yeah. make it go away. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yes, you make your way out of the plaza and into uh, another area of the city. This city is marked by another environmental change. It is black and white. Everything is monochromatic. Hmm. For the record, um, it doesn't have to be an old lady. It's just that's that was the first time I smelled that smell. <laughs> old men can also just douse themselves in cologne, and it's equally bad. Oh, but I specifically remember old lady perfume smell from childhood and being like, ooh, it's kind of worse like like it's 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 more stealthy with old ladies like with old men it's going to be like a lot of cologne and also tobacco and also bo and you can get that at a pretty good distance but if mm. you get real close to some old ladies <laughs> 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 then it'll hit you like a punch in the stomach uh, do you have a basket of old peaches in your purse is that <laughs> <laughs> old peaches and palm fruits decay. is always that person at church like Man or woman, mm. there's somebody. There's always somebody in there. Like that. See, that's why you should just not go to church. Agreed. People that's smell there. One reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not to keep a sidetrack, but I saw a TikTok video today of a preacher having to stop his sermon because somebody farted, and it was <laughs> it was hilarious. He just would not stop talking about it. Just the, the, the power and the lingering of it. It's like it's it's like if the devil had showed up and he was trying to debate it, but it was it was somebody's fart. He was, he was, he was like, so I tried to preach it. through it. I it tried. So yeah, that, that stink is too strong. I had to take a moment. We got to talk about it. I see y'all y'all fanning yourselves. I know why. It won't go away. It's lingering. It's a lingering presence, and it's oh. washing over the masses of, of our congregation. That's terrible. Like the preacher has to stop his sermon and do a tight five about how stank your ass. <laughs> it was a tight five. Uh, Have some public shaming. <laughs> he threw in there. Everybody does it, but yeah, this one he's in like, I see y'all laughing out there. You done it too. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it wouldn't be church if there wasn't some public shade thrown. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's what I mostly associate with my experiences in church. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, so yes, yeah. the area of the city you're in is entirely monochromatic, black and white. Everyone here has a sort of a, a different cast to them. They are largely people and Xenos of various types. Like the first time you've seen Xenos... Um, warrior every, princess no 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 like, <laughs> like, like like yourself like <laughs> like yourselves the, oh. the, the sort of like a catch-all term for anybody that's not a human that humans yeah. use he knows yeah, I know <laughs> that's why I made the joke I knew what I was saying was wrong that was the humor <laughs> that's uh, what makes it funny I In, know incorrect I know. <laughs> don't, don't shame me for for, for, for hey, be, welcome to for church clarity. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to church, church, motherfucker. Like this is the best kind of DMing to fart with right here. It's Zoom DMing. Zoom, yeah. Zoom, oh, Zoom. Oh, Zoom oh, 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 edits oh, it out. Mute it. Yeah, Zoom. Zoom straight up catches it and good to, and like kills the sound and like the, the only thing they can do to, to to tell is like if you smell it and you make a horrible face and then. <laughs> 
Yeah, the worst part is you can't share it with your friends. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it, if it's a particularly powerful sounding fart, Zoom will pick it up. And I know this because in our first season of the regular show, I thought that that was Frank's moving. And it was definitely a fart, and I caught it only because I was editing. But because I caught it editing, I was able to to hone in on it and really bring those <laughs> fart levels up for our <laughs> audience to enjoy. So you did get to share it. You got to share it once. Oh, God. That's why you see me every so often mute my mic. Yeah. And make a grumpy baby face. It's because it's <laughs> grumpy baby face. <laughs> Grumpy, confused, angry baby. I don't know how body works. Nothing nothing makes a baby madder than their own farts. They can't leave. They can't walk yet. Just have to fast. Stuck in them. (laughs) That's what you get for focusing on the brain, you stupid baby. You could have came out walking, but no, you want to be able to invent shit. So guess what? (laughs) (laughs) Spit your own farts. Kill your brain cells. Now you can't invent shit. (laughs) You gotta sit your own two-way for years. Uh, Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right black and white xeno area yeah black and white xeno here yeah. everything here has a sort of a noir detective look about it um the sit like straight up like up and down line brutalist architecture there are vehicles on the street like actual archaic old vehicles moving down the streets and you guys are walking down sidewalks I swear, you're just running through all the Batmans. The first one was Batman Forever. The second one was Batman and Scooby-Doo, the Adam West version. And now this one is Batman the Animated Series. It's all black and white with archaic vehicles. Batman the Animated Series wasn't in black and white. You just had a black and white TV when you were 12. It was close enough to black and white. The only color was Robin. It did have a very noir feel to it, the old Batman Animated Series, yeah. That's what makes it the best Batman. It is well, the they, best Batman. They, they painted all the frames on black paper. Mm-hmm. All the animation. Frames. How does that? How does that work? I don't know. The stop motion, I guess. <laughs> it sounded good when I said it, so uh, I said it. <laughs> I, I remember well, how do you reading pa- it. How do you paint an animation cell on black paper? You can paint on black. Yeah. You just you just paint it on the paper. And you take a picture of it. Different colors. Yeah, but how did you get a background in there if it's black? The whole thing. Are you talking about the background? You can paint on no. top of it. You can paint on top of black. Actually, it might have been the backgrounds. Okay, that, that makes more it. sense. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> the cells themselves. Okay. <laughs> I I remember reading about it in a, a cartoon magazine back when I still lived with my parents. So. And still red. Oh, still we red. also have that that show to thank for uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, she, mixed bag there, but yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> that's where she was created. Uh, I know. The animators used light colors on black paper, the complete opposite of the animation industry standard. So they just did yeah. the opposite of what people do now. That's kind of cool. It's I didn't know totally that. totally doable. Thank you for fact checking me. You had me second guessing myself. I, I wasn't just fact checking. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm a bit of an animator myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of voice fact checking myself. You. Yeah, no, I was. I'm curious how they do it. It's little facts like that I like. Oh, I like being fact checked because I have had years of disinformation rolling around in my brain that I thought had been true until somebody yeah. fact checks me. On I it. will continue to believe that Bill Cosby got hit in the face with a chicken patty in prison. I don't care. How fake that story is. It made me laugh for three days. Don't <laughs> prove me wrong, Internet. I know you will. No, screw you, Snopes. I'm not reading the article. Uh. Oh, Snopes. Anyway, so yes. Can I Can I continue? No. Mm-hmm. Can you? Uh, may I continue? <laughs> God damn. The thing about that video game, Near Automata, is... Oh, uh... fuck you. We're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of porn for that on the internet. Um, anyway, so yes. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Awkward silence while Frank makes weird hand signals that nobody else will be able to see. <laughs> That's true, uh, you know. I didn't, I didn't want to continue like, derailing. He's probably just vi like frantically searching as we speak for the porn. Oh, he's seen it already. I don't need to search. <laughs> he's, okay. got his, he's already got it was, saved on his computer. I was agreeing and making gestures to uh, to illustrate the expansive nature of how much there is. <laughs> At any rate, so this noir section of the city, it's, you um, you see uh, aliens like yourselves in, um, ar in archaic business attire, um, Night, night, uh, gown or night, night gowns, uh, evening wear. Moving through a, uh, a high contrast cityscape. You see, um, a, a bit of color ahead of you. A simple, um, blinking neon bar sign. Owl's place, and when you look down at Owl Agor. You see that his the strange general's um, or the general's outfit you gave him has sort of transformed into a a sailor suit. <laughs> He's like, "Hey boys, what do you say we hit up the bar here?" <laughs> uh, gonna go price a couple dames. <laughs> now you're talking, kid. <laughs> well, there it is. Um, is this he where walks we need to go, or is purposefully it... ahead to the uh, to the bar and steps inside. You hear a, a shout, a shout of um, familiar greeting, as if the people in there know him. Where everybody knows your name. Ow. By the time you guys are peering in, he's already bellied up to the bar and ordered um, a big, a huge pint of uh, beer. <laughs> are we going to go with him or are we going to continue on looking for the, the alchemist tower on our own I mean hell for all we know this is the alchemist tower mm. uh, yes, everything, everything's been you, weird when you step in and the place has a, has a has a sort of a a good atmosphere a good vibe to it there are people here that are friendly um, there are people chatting, uh, talking animatedly about their day or local politics or, or whatever, you know, boring stuff, boring everyday things. The dwarf in the sailor suit, Elagor, beckons you over to the bar. Come on, I'll buy you around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Four buckets of suds for my, for my pals here, Charlie. Is, is this the place? Hmm. <laughs> uh, four beers are served for the for the lot of you, and um, he raises his glass and toast says, "To the alchemist, man! What a swell guy!" <laughs> I don't think this is the place. Then, <laughs> <laughs> when he says that, uh, the whole crowd goes silent and looks at him. He's like, "What?" <laughs> It's like the whole thing has stopped, paused even. The people are still blinking, but they're not moving on um, an unnatural level. Charlie behind the bar turns around. <laughs> you see that he's got red skin and uh, short horns on his head. Nobody respects the alchemist anymore. Everything's just gone to shit. Come on, folks, drink your beers. Tell me about yourselves. Tell me about your day. What are you doing here? Looking for you. Me? <laughs> just Charlie, your everyday average barkeep. Well, take a drink of my, yeah. my beer. Is Charlie the only thing with color? Right now? Yeah. Uh huh. 
Mm. Well, we don't have much time, but uh, backstory. Blah. <laughs> Which backstory? <laughs> Why we're here. Why you're here. Okay. So you tell the tale of while you're here in a very quick and um and almost it almost feels like, like a montage. A, no, not a montage, but a jump cut. <laughs> oh. He starts and then he's been and you guys blink and the next thing and that's why we're here. <laughs> Perfect. Charlotte looks fascinated. He's like, that's an amazing tale. You know what? You don't need to pay for those drinks. You guys have had a lot on your plate. You're a good man, Charles. Can I tell you, Charles? <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> yeah, I tried to be. But he steps through the bar, not around it, but just sort of walks through the wood. And he's a, uh, you know, everything, everything's kind of falling apart here. I, I thought I could keep it out, you know? Uh, back when I was the alchemist, everything was hunky dory. I was in charge. We was doing, you know, fun stuff, taking over kingdoms. And I had friends that backed me up. They left me in charge of this area. I conquered it lickety split. I haven't seen them since then, though. Mm. That's because we are the friends. That's whack. You see him back up a little bit. He's like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, 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 I know it doesn't, but uh, it's true. Hey, you sound just like, <laughs> you sound just like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. He, you see him turn to the to the, the still giving a toast allegory and sort of put his hand on the, the shoulder of the dwarf in the sailor suit, and the two kind of awkwardly merge. And oh. He becomes... Oh. He becomes Ah, he becomes it's like the thing, a, but hot. He becomes a blood red dwarf with horns, and 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 swills down the drink. The sailor suit is gone; and has now been replaced with what you guys remember as Allegor's adventuring like get up, mm. with all the potion bottles and the reagents and his pack and his weapons. He's like, ah, oh, I am so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. We are mm. sorry. I tried to keep him out. I guess after a while, building stuff around him was just all I could think to do. You know? Who? There's not really much of me left. I think... Like, I feed him a couple souls. He takes the souls. He doesn't take the souls. Actually, he's like, "It's fine. I'm just that's just me eating pieces of myself, and I can't break down the integrity too much." He looks up at you and says, "Everything's everything's not turned out the way I wanted it to. Nothing happens like like you need it. I." And then he stops as well, and you see him begin to slowly turn gray, like the rest of the environment around you. I think it might already be too late for me. And then everybody, including him, begins to fade out of the bar. He's like, he got in at the last second. Took everything I was. To me, he's death. And this Quick is a question. City. Does this sound like the dwarf? Or does this sound like Allegor? It alchemist? sounds like it sounds like both. Who's You're he? Getting... Yeah. <laughs> Who's he? The memory eater. And I'm just a memory. And then he disappears. And you feel and you what? see cracks begin to flow against the wall. Got go up the wall. And bits of the ceiling begin to fall down into the bar, smashing tables. Search for the memory eater. Um, you see nothing in here. 
go outside. I forgot to. Mm-hmm. Go outside. All right. You go outside and you can see buildings all around the city of death begin to crumble. Um, everything begins to turn to powder and debris, just slowly falling as if it's as if too much is happening in a in a in a computer game with low processing speed. Everything is hitching, hiccuping. A lot of cubes are suspended in the air and then suddenly drop. Yeah, or you, everything just freezes and then is in a different position. <laughs> and we finally, can see the boom I, mics in the corner of our screen. <laughs> <laughs> Every, <laughs> everything in the city. You guys can see the area around you fall apart. And in the distance, you see the bright rainbow strewn world of the plaza begin to crumble and turn gray as well. And so on and so on out to the edges of the city into the massive walls. And even those begin to to disappear until finally there is only one edifice left in the city. A massive statue. Massive statue of a lean man um, wearing modern clothing. He has thin antennae on top of his head. And he's wearing a pair of sunglasses in the statue. The memory eater. Move towards him. All right. You guys move your way towards the, to, through the debris toward the statue. As you do, uh, Geist, you feel you feel disconnected briefly. You feel like what you're doing in here is less real even than it has been so far and you feel a, a like a line of pressure down your cheek like starting at your cheekbone and going down nothing painful just a line of pressure and you hear a voice outside the game go ah shit it, it sounds like alexander never mind but suddenly you're fl- you're back into it The trip forward takes a long time, but not very long at all. This one, probably montage I suppose. And so finally, you're at the feet, the base of this massive edifice designed to look like a person that you don't know. Or rather, there's a tickle. <clears throat> hmm. Or anything about the statue that we can access um, looking for the memory itself um make a make a make an intelligence check I'm nope sp- I'm gonna spend a stamina to give myself advantage on that yeah. all right hmm Oh, a three and a 13 for a 14. <laughs> that gives you a 14? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not ringing any bells. I rolled Anybody an 18. Else? Oh, you got an 18? All I right. 18 then. plus one's a 19. All right. Well, then, Grimjax, you look up and suddenly it dawns on you. You've seen this person once before, alive briefly, but mostly dead. The first thing you saw when you woke up from the. from from the simulation pods. You saw a Vesk and a Lashtuna. A Lashunta, excuse me. Lashtuna. <laughs> Lashtuna. <laughs> a Lashtuna like with a really long tail. You saw a, Lash, uh, a, a Lashunta um, standing there arguing before the doors burst open and they were gunned down by the Perfect Fantasy Company's <laughs> facility guards. This is the same Lashunta. Okay. So we know who he is. So um so let's look for like you said, it's a way in. Maybe like uh is there like a doorway to enter to go to like try to make it to his head, to his brain, where I assume is the storage of where he's storing oh. uh the stolen memories. Oh, and there's an elevator all the way to the top. All right, make a make a check for me. Search around for me. Give me give me wisdom checks. Wisdom. Ooh, natural 20, 21. 
Excellent. All right. Uh, basically, you walk over to the base of the statue, lean against one of the shoes, mm -hmm. and uh, a door falls open. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> it's that easy, folks. <laughs> Do I remember the line of pressure on my face and the the sound of shit? Uh, you do. It's it's fuzzy, but you remember it. All right. As we're getting in, I'll say something is happening outside. I don't know what, but we must hurry. <clears throat> yep. All right. Uh, you know that scene in Ghostbusters where they're going to fight the the bad guy at the end, and they get to the run into the building together, and they get to the stairs, the bottom of the stairs, and they look up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where you guys are now. <laughs> <laughs> but the elevator yeah, <laughs> there is none it was teleportation okay so start, we bust out start moving we bring out our photon packs and cross the stream let's go mm -hmm. All right. you guys begin trudging up the stairs it takes a long time luckily you don't feel very tired because this is technically a video game a video game or a simulation so none of that really bothers you <laughs> So you, do some, so you do something. You do something. You do something on your HUDs, mark stamina going down, but it doesn't seem to do anything. <laughs> In fact, your HUDs seem to be mo have more and more almost irrelevant information, like heart rate. You see little Im like cartoon images of your face that is uh, like th that is just uh, grimacing with various kinds of exertion that you do. Not that you're grimacing, but the little face in it is. Uh, the Doom Man. Yeah, it is very doomy. <laughs> oh, man, come together with your plan. <laughs> <laughs> Hold down the sprint button and run up the stairs till my stamina runs out, then slow down. I don't know. He said this was, this was old school. This might be Fallout 3. There wasn't any sprint button in that goddamn slow walking game. <laughs> oh, God. Just jump. <laughs> like the first thing anybody modded onto the, the game, I'm sure, was yeah, a sprint. way to move slightly faster than at a crawl. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> a way to keep up with your uh, escort quests. Ay, escort quests. Anyway. Proceed onward. You yep, proceed onward steps. and upward until finally you get to what you're guessing is maybe the uh, upper abdomen. Like this, the stairways have given way to long halls between each and every stair going up. So you've gotten much you've gotten out of the legs definitely you're probably moved through the hips and now you're just moving down long halls and you see lots of uh pictures on the walls here photos of things that are possibly memories though they're not your memories obviously you're just looking at first person views of places people you don't know um things that you've never done or you or no one you know has ever done you reckon you have, some of you recognize certain locales but those are locales that a lot of people have been to popular space stations uh, important cities and a lot of it seems to be and a lot of the pictures seem to be of the whoever is thinking uh, whoever is the first person to view the camera is or the the painter is in, in some of the portraity looking ones looking at various hollow screens Looking at any of the hollow screens that have anything to do with Al Gore. Al Gore. As you go further up, you start to recognize more stuff. Um, like as as you're moving along, you begin seeing things that um are familiar to where you have been. You see locations on the planet Jeeks, for instance. Um, you see, you see the the big lizard alien guy, who suddenly is in a lot of the pictures with you. You're Start taking all of them off the wall. <laughs> so taking can. all of them off the wall. All right, they're they're not pictures. They're fr big framed things. <laughs> hmm. So nothing we can put in a bag and walk away with. I'm afraid not. 
But uh, as, as you walk down these halls, you see through these pictures, you finally see one that looks like whoever is the point of view watching uh, six people. Four of them you recognize, uh, five of them, if you count the dwarf Allegor. The other one seems to be uh, a normal looking human with an eye patch. Who you, who you quickly realize is the corpse that you guys found um, at Praximus? Pre, uh, tree, what was the captain's name? Uh, aboard the Madrigal, yeah. Uh, the, the corpse of... Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> lost my fucking um rice and thight rice and thight it was a weird name how do we access the information from these memories uh they just seem to be just static pictures <clears throat> but there are um, a lot of them like this this person has been some of them look like first person view. Some of them looks like screens of like security footage that is looking in on the group that you guys are in. So look, then, at a mem- look at a memory uh-huh. and then basically touch it or right. try to put my head into it. So okay. I try to absorb it. All right. You touch it. Give me a, give me a, give me a charisma check. Okay. Roll to 15 plus 2, 17. All right. You, um, you, t- you touch, you touch it, you put your head to the picture. This one is a picture of one of the, um, one of the screened images, like, and suddenly you remember here you are sitting here. Uh, you're watching um, security footage. He's like, "Ah, oh, shit!" They're saying goodbye. You hear a, a husky, reptilian voice behind you. He's like, "Is that part of what we need? Do we need the eye patched one? No, no, no. We just need these guys." Our employer just said, "Hey, you need. To, <laughs> we need to make sure these guys are the ones we get." Have you discovered a way? Yeah, I, th- I have a few plans. Don't worry. In the image in the screen, you see um, the group shaking hands with Rice and Thight at a starport as he aboards um, a ship that is clearly uh, a, a, a less destroyed version of the Madrigal. And um, as they walk away, the ship departs. Like, I think we'll have everything under control here. Don't worry. <laughs> We're going to be rich. And you are kicked out of the memory quickly. You get, you see um a lot of the uh the you see suddenly you see a lot of the pictures around you start going dark. And you hear a voice echoing down the halls. Oh no 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 friends. Well well well. I thought something was going on in the perimeter, and I was trying to figure out what's going. I thought all oh, my little tricks of the trade had finally gotten busted me through, but I didn't realize I had help on the outside. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Uh, Cobras here. We have met briefly. It's fine. Listen, why don't you guys come up to the head and we could talk about this, okay? It's, it's important for everyone. We all have things the other want, right? Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> good, good. Um, you see a, a wall crack and shatter, and suddenly, like through the plaster, a <laughs> a lift appears. A door to the lift appears. He's like, "I'll make it quick for you. Come on." I feel like I was worth the extra effort. Get on. All right. Get on the lift. All right, yeah. lift. Yeah. Yep. Now, the four of you get on the lift, you guys hear some um, peppy elevator music on the way up. 
Dun, dun, dun. I knew there was an elevator. God, is this Smash Mouth? Is this Smash Mouth music? No, it's the girlfriend. Don't you, <laughs> don't you about me. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Mess with the bull, get the horns. Haga naga. <laughs> Does I believe I can fly the instrumental version? All the way up. <laughs> I think the weirdest music I've ever heard was like an instrumental version of doll parts. Mm. <laughs> that was very, very old. Old. It would have right? taken me a while yeah. to realize like what that what it, I was it, hearing. It, it, like, it was like, almost the end. Yeah. I'm like, is this fucking doll parts? That'd <laughs> <laughs> be as weird as, as weird as uh, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> but anyway, yes, the um the lift goes quickly. And the next thing you know, you guys are, um, it opens with a a shush, revealing an opulent palatial open air area. You see massive screens lining the walls. He's like, hey, what's up? At the far end of the thing on a a massive throne, it actually is a weird, eerie, similar similar vibe to Alexander Nevermind's uh, workroom that you guys entered this simulation in <laughs> but more more gothic more edgy more more try hard <laughs> more hacker man more hacker man yes mm. hacking too much time <laughs> <laughs> he said oh so glad you came I cannot tell you how hard it has been to keep this shit afloat this hardware is garbage. I am going to kill somebody that sold me it. It is trash. You know, provided I can get out. <laughs> Incidentally, the Les Tuna says as he stands up off his very oversized, comically oversized cushioned throne. I'd like to get out of here. I need a I need a I need a res. <laughs> you know? That's what you want from us. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mince words. I don't know how how much longer this hardware has. Uh the only thing I can't see is uh how you guys got in. Uh did you break into another facility? Huh? We just used the door. No <laughs> The sim. How did you get into this sim? We have to ask our our players from a month ago to remember the fine details. Well, <laughs> we we are a favor from someone. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Planning close to the vest. I understand. We all have our trade secrets. The question is, why should we? Well, why shouldn't you? Hey, listen. I know shit. You obviously don't. It's not like I couldn't perceive what was going on around you. I managed to hack a few systems on that bucket of crap you call a ship. I could I could see into there. I know a few things. I know what you're doing, and I know you've lost eight months of time. And whose fault do you think that is? You know, I'm gonna just gonna give you the mea culpa on this one. I <laughs> was underprepared. <laughs> You are tough nuts to crack. But, you know, whatever. (laughs) That's all in the past. Literally a past you can't access anymore. Is that what you're offering? Hmm? Is that what you're offering? No, 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 no. I'm offering what you need. I know what you're here for. Do tell. You're, You're here for that other half of that code that you already had. Mm -hmm. And I, by extension, have still. Because it wasn't until I... He he pauses for a moment, frowns, has died, that I found out what was going on. And it is going to blow your mind, kids. You know... All right. Shock us. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell you now. Are you crazy? It's my only leverage. Wow me. 
Well, I mean, you can make up whatever you want. So how do we know whatever you're going to give us is going to be true? Because the memories aren't mine. They are over here. He points to one of the big screens like that sectioned off part of my memory. I made sure to store the important bits from you that I gathered on the way in. It's going to be fun. (laughs) So, do I see computer systems in here? You see a lot of things that could represent computer systems. Like, everything here looks like a cross between uh, a a computer lab and an alchemy lab. Everything has a sort of a steampunk aesthetic uh, as far as the actual, like, equipment goes. What I'm trying to get at is, could I hack his system? You could try. While yeah. he's attempting that, I'm going to uh, just get real big and be like, "Look, you better tell us if you have any if you have any memories of mine. You better give them up." Are you really going to threaten me? You know, once I go, all this goes, and uh, it's pretty connected to me, like. This Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm warning you, he points to Grimjax, you need to stay away from my shit. I will defend it. I rolled a 17 plus 15, so that's 32. What? <laughs> How'd you get plus 17? Oh, right. Uh, I rolled a my computer skill based off my own character. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you jumped back to the other system. <laughs> well, I mean, there is no computer system in the grave. Mm. Yeah, Jeff just said, fuck grave. <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm going back to Starfinder. He's like, well, you're not quite done with grave yet. As you begin moving on, you quickly run over, and it doesn't take much. The, the way the interface here is so interconnected to the environment, as soon as you touch something, you interface. But as soon as you interface, the guy goes ape shit. No, 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 no. And you see him get bigger than Weepscape and lunge at you. Uh, I guess roll initiative. Yeah, let's fuck it. Let's just kill this guy. Oh, before. Before. After. Definitely after. All right. Well, before us, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to intercept him and slam him to the ground if I can. All right. Um. Oh, excuse me. I guess uh, moving. Making me a strength check. That is an eighteen. All right. You run up and uh, check him as he's lunging towards Grimjacks. Um, uh, give me a second, give me a second strength check to try and uh, put him down, though. Come on, baby. Uh, that's just a 10. All right. You were able to stop him in his tracks as he, as one of his arms, like, goes over your shoulder. One of his arms goes under yours, but you're able to just, like, strong, like, just fucking, like, just turn into a wall there as he slams into you. I am weak. (laughs) Grim Jackson. Trying to interface. All right. Um, you see a lot of jumbled files here. Uh, a lot of them are symbolically labeled, um, but it's e- pretty easy to surmise who is who and what is what based on, like, just the the file colors and the, the names. It's like you just went into Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've you've reached. You've reached levels of simulation that you have never gone before. You are simulating within a sim. You are basically in an an ocean of data with basically little islands of information all around you. Each island looks roughly like the home worlds of their uh, their respective memory holders. Trying to find what I'm looking for. The um. What do I need? Uh. What do you want me to roll? Do. 
What what are you looking for? Is the question. Uh, I'm looking for the or see if I can get another co- um the other half the coordinates. All right. Uh, you begin searching around as quickly as you can. Give me give me give me give me computers again. I suppose. He's looking. You for try the and jab. try and <laughs> intuit the functionality of this space, trying to make it do searches for you. Okay. So that would be a twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. All right. You begin um, moving around, and you hear the guy uh, outside the system, the um, the the Lashinta, like sh- let let out a painful cry. He's like, "Ah, get out of there! Get out!" Uh, and you come across um, one labeled one of the files labeled <clears throat> uh, "Discovery." This one is one of your own memories. It's just three seasons of Star Trek Discovery. (laughs) (laughs) No! You're standing, you're sitting across from, um, from Rice and Thight as he's, as he's, uh, pouring you another drink. He's like, listen, I know these other three aren't terribly trustworthy but you know they all have skills we might need one of them one of them is a fucking precog you can't imagine how useful that could be you hear yourself say you can't imagine how dangerous it could be he's like it's not like we have bad intentions (laughs) but what about him you hear yourself say we're just gonna have to take that risk it's important Uh, we have both we have both uh, the contacts we need. You go get the first half of the research. I will go do my thing back in the in the Les Preskinar Empire and talk to my contacts with researchers, and we'll be able to we'll be able to put it together. I think this is gonna work. It'll just work. You hear yourself oh. groan. <laughs> Anyway, he slides you a piece of paper. He's like, memorize it. Don't let it out of your sight. Don't, don't, don't destroy this when you have to. Put it hard coded into your memory. Make sure you eat, sleep, and breathe these numbers. We need them. And I'll get you the other half. All right. You open the, um, you open the, the paper and everything on it is gobbledygook. <laughs> you hear a loud laugh outside the uh, outside of your your semi simulation. You say, "You didn't think I didn't? Encry- I wouldn't encrypt that shit, moron!" It's his go. Meanwhile, uh, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, Weepskeep, the huge Lashtuna is uh, like, "I am gonna punch you into the next simulation, bitch." And he rears back and takes a big swing on you. This is a person who, in reality, you saw, was a very skinny kind of, uh, you know, your typical person that spends too much time around tech and not enough time around taking a jog. Mm. (laughs) But he's way bigger than you now. And uh, saying very sexist things at you. He takes a swing, make a defense roll. (laughs) Uh, That is a 15... 15. Um, he hits. Oops. Uh, he does five damage to you. Uh, attempting to get you out of the way. He's like, you people need to stop. You're making this place really unstable as he punches you. The second, the, the go is the second crowd. What are you two doing? Uh, Geist and Val. What was the damage? Oh, just five. Okay. Just five. That's almost all my hit points. <laughs> yeah, same. I know. <laughs> but you guys have plenty of our redos. <laughs> yeah. I want to channel Jeb. All I right. Wanna cl- I want to climb this fucker. Okay. Um. You channel Jeb. You f- see yourself changing as even as you run towards him. Go ahead and give me a dexterity. Nice. 15. 15. All right. You, Jeb, now, you now in, in Jeb skin. Uh, 
<laughs> leap onto the back of this massive Lashtuna and begin scampering your way up. Classic Jeb, classic green skin, pre, pre being dead Jeb. If that's my whole turn, that's cool. No, uh, I'll let you do an attack. Go ahead. I want to shove some poison in his ear. Okay. Give it a go. Just like pack it in a tube and <laughs> straighten his ear. All right. You're packing a tube, shoving his ear, and Ugh. he takes yeah. damage from. Oh my gosh. All right. He's taking. How much damage was it? Two? Um, no, I didn't, I didn't remember that. Five. Five. Five damage. All right. He's got a save against it. I did. I'd I, oh, rather okay. it didn't. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, reroll. Oh, sorry, no, Valgorth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crimson King in this uh, grave sorry, setting. Crimson okay. King. <laughs> uh, I'm going to fireball the guy. Fireball the guy. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, 21. 21, and that is a hit. Uh, and then I'm going to spend a stamina to double my damage die. All right. Yeah. Do I also have to save? Nah, we're just going to pin the fireball. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Hey, oh, eight damage. Eight damage. Five and a three on a d6. Five and a three, smoking a waffle. Burn this, a blitz. Yeah, this is a Dark Souls fireball where, like, you just throw it, it hits the enemy. I got yeah. you. It's, it's produced flame. It's, yeah. Um, Let's see, reroll initiative. <laughs> Hey, before. After. After. Uh, yeah, after. All right, All right. so I'll fireball him again. <laughs> All right, fireball him again. Go ahead and roll. Oh. <laughs> A natural one. Uh, natural one. All right, you um. You shoot your fireball across. He easily dodges out of the way of it. It slams into um, the throne behind him, which catches fire. He turns. He looks at it uh, in an extremely pissed off way, and begins cussing, cussing you to high hell. Um, Not pointing uh, anybody but me. He threw it. <laughs> <laughs> they did it. <laughs> they all did it. Uh, you see him sort of glitch out for a second. Actually, actually, the whole world glitches out for a second. You guys are back in Alexander Nevermind's lab very briefly. He's like, as the building is kind of shaking, like you just get just thrown out of the simulation briefly. And you you hear Alexander Nevermind says, No, nah, come on now. Stop it. You stop that. And then suddenly you're back in as the uh, simulation uh, takes hold once more. Uh, first, which was Valgorth now, the now it's uh, the Lashunta. You see him, um, let's see, there's one. He uh, attempts to move past you, or rather he moves past you and like goes to tackle Grimjax. So let, let me do that. Uh, Grimjax, roll to defend. 22. You, however, are still on his back. Uh, just letting you know. he did, He's not shaking you off. 22? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, my God. What's, what is that, a 16? Is that... No, it's an 18. All right. Unfortunately... I beat the 22. <laughs> That's an 18. Um, on the die, I got obviously more than. Is it obvious? Tell us the math. Well, I have 18, and oh. he, he's got a plus. <laughs> he's got a plus six, being a boss. Mm. And he does seven damage to you. I need you to make another charisma check if you want to stay uh, attached to the the um, the memories. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. All right. You stay in or stay connected. 
However, you know, you're not unaware of what's going on around you. The how much damage did I take? Seven. Okay. We are on to after. Yeah, afters. After who's first? Afters. Since I'm on him, I'll go ahead and stab him. Oh wait, I forgot to roll for poison before I before I move on. Uh, he does he does resist that time. So go ahead. Okay. Drop that die. Uh, seventeen plus four, twenty-one. Twenty-one resist. He doesn't. All right. Do you damage? All right. That's gonna. I'm gonna add an extra dice of damage. The stamina usage, which is good because I got exactly one and a six, so seven damage. Seven damage. All right. Uh, other seconds go seconds. That's uh, Weepskeep and Grimjacks. I'm gonna try to attempt a strength check to pull him off of Grimjacks and slam him to the ground. Try okay. again. Give me another strength. All right. So the first one, or will the strength 16? Uh, yep, that'll do it. You pull him backwards. And uh, give me, give me, give me a strength, or give me an attack roll. That way, we'll do. That way, it'll cover both, slamming down and doing a little damage. That is definitely twenty-three. Twenty-three. That is a nineteen on the dice. Almost as good as I can do. All right, you pull backwards. He falls awkwardly. Um, give me your, give me a, give me your strength, or give me your damage, based on d- d- a d6. Roll a d6 for me. Three. Three. All right. He takes three more damage as you slam him down on his back. I don't know. We're not trying to kill you, but we will. <laughs> you fucking fools. You don't even know what you're doing. Just want my uh, memories. <laughs> the, uh, you're go Geist. No, not no, Geist. I already, yeah, I understand. Grimjacks, my bad. Hmm. 31 on my computer's check to try to get more information out of out of the computer system. Um, <clears throat> this one is a strange, like you, you're basically in combat, you're grappling, whatever your searches comes up with. You go into a memory that is not one of yours. Uh, this one is from a far shorter kind of uh, worldview one of Valgorth's, you are looking out around a corner in a uh, in, in what appears to be the fool's gambit and you see you see uh, sorry you see Geist talking to the fellow you're fighting Okay. And uh, they're talking very low, but and the it's difficult to hear what they're saying. You're guessing the rest of the crew might be on the ship, but they're just off in a very quiet corner. And you hear him mutter to uh, Ocobrace, the cat. I must remember the cat, if nothing else. And then uh, you pop out of the memory as quickly as you went in. Hmm. Find that memory. Yeah, I don't know. All right. I got time to share that memory that I've seen. Well, that was Grimjack seeing your. That was Grimjack memory. seeing one of your memories. Oh, oh, extra weird. Yeah. <laughs> the. Uh... <laughs> so you need to find my memory of that conversation. 
to determine whether or not we got to gut markets or whatever to find the, the code. <laughs> the uh, the the world around you warps and wavers once more as you are once again quickly kicked back into Alexander Nevermind's um, lab. Uh, you, you hear yourself sharply inhale uh, as, let's see, let me roll a d4. Okay. As Grimjax, you are uh, impaled by a piece of falling debris. Not, not a deadly impale, but just a piece of sharpened steel that has fallen from above. Uh, stabs itself into your arm and it creates a feedback loop across all of you. You guys, you guys all feel like you've been stabbed in the arm and you hear Alexander screaming, shit, shit, shit! Um, slowly, much more slowly than the last time, the simulation begins to suck you back in and back into your combat with Cobrace, but we'll pick that up next time. Oh. After these messages. <laughs> Dogger, do your thing. The thing about if you're looking for port about near Automata, the um you have to go to I think you have to go to Reddit. <laughs> That's gonna be your best bet to find really weird porn and not have to worry about links. Just, you know, have a fake account, I guess. You shouldn't have a real account on Reddit to begin with. Nobody on there should know who you are. <laughs> Um, uh, anyhow, this has been uh, Raiders of the Lark version 2.0. Uh, I hope you were entertained. I was. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. bye.